Lots happening right now in our region. Perch patterns have been working really well. The bite has been good. Just keep snapping it off the box. The down imaging, the side imaging. There's a lot of different variations and different ways to rig this. Oh, yeah! Look at this guy. They are heavy. Oh, look at that. <laughs> On this week's show, we're talking brown bass. This is Angling Buzz TV. I'm Troy Linder. I'm James Lindner. I'm here with my cousin James, who loves to fish smallmouth and is very knowledgeable, much more than myself, about smallmouth bass. You know what? Going to seminars, people always ask me, what's your favorite fish to fish for? And you know what I always tell them, Troy? Whatever is biting. But to yeah. tell you the truth, smallmouth bass are unquestionably one of my favorites. And to catch them consistently, you have to understand the nature of the fish. And they're far different than a largemouth bass. You think largemouth? shallow weeds, cover, very cover oriented. Yeah. When you look at a smallmouth bass, they're a lot more like a walleye. It's real common to catch them as deep as 25, 30 foot of water out on clean sand, rock piles. Mm -hmm. So you gotta be on your game and be willing to move to catch these fish consistently. Yeah, yes you do. And they are my favorite fish to catch. So let's take a closer look at brown bass. Whether you call them bronzebacks, smallies, or brown bass, this much is certain, smallmouth bass pack a punch many times their size. From Maine to Mississippi and the Carolinas to California, and even the mountain streams of Hawaii, smallmouth bass have grown well outside their native range of the upper and midwestern U.S. and parts of Canada, providing anglers more opportunities than ever to spar with these world-class prize fighters. And no matter where you are, it's hard to beat early season smallies. Throughout the Angling Buzz region, we're re-seeing waves of fish moving from wintering holes to pre-spawn staging and spawning areas. These types of spots are easy to find. Large shallow flats with mixed rock and sand bottom are gold mines for spring brownies. The initial movement happens with water temperature in the mid 40s. As the water temperatures rise into the 50s, the numbers of fish moving shallow only increases. And when it reaches the low to mid 60s, spawning begins. Now as a general rule, in spring, the best bite happens later in the day with the sun warming the water. Early season smallmouth presentations are pretty diverse. Suspending jerk baits, spinner baits, rattle baits, soft baits like tubes, minnow profiles, finesse swim baits, natural colored grubs, and stick worms have to be in your arsenal. And I almost forgot about hair jigs. There's simply no better time of the year to hunt smallmouth bass. For most northern bass anglers, this spring bite is about as close to heaven as you can get. Right now is a great time to be fishing shallow for smallmouth, you know, the pre-spawn, post-spawn, but things are gonna be changing really quick. You know, as of recently, I've been doing a lot of finesse fishing in shallow water with a spinning rod. Mm -hmm. Tubes, dragging uh, drop shot rigs, as well as like hair jigs. Mm -hmm. But it, it's really interesting on how fast things can change. In the next couple of weeks, that water temperature warms up, they get done spawning, they start moving out to deeper water, and then the fun really begins. Yeah, basically you can catch them any way you want. I mean, you're talking ripping jerk baits, top water baits, swim baits slow, swim baits fast, hair jigs, drop shots. I mean, it really opens up. Basically, everything you have in your tackle box is going to work at some point for smallmouth bass. And after the short commercial break, we have our highlight destination feature, as well as the first of our Buzz Bite reports as Angling Buzz continues. Lake Vermilion. Explore. Relax. Reconnect. Minnesota's most beautiful lake. Whoa. Get hooked on our trophy wallet. That's a beauty. Bass. This is my favorite fish. Musky fish. That's a beauty there. Things to do? You'll never get bored. Rooms with a view? We got them. Lake Vermilion. Four seasons of fun. If you're looking at this, how do you know it's not this? If you see this, how do you know it's not actually this? Trust your AquaView and you'll see the real underwater world. AquaView leads by innovation. First in high definition, first in handheld viewing, the finest underwater optics, the brightest, sharpest screens, the original underwater camera, 
and the fish finder that puts you on the fish. Some lodges are just a cut above. Hawk Lake is one of those. They're the only Orvis endorsed lodge in all of Ontario. And they're the four time finalists for the best Orvis lodge in all of North America. They feature cordon blue trained chefs and offer some of the best freshwater fishing in the world. You can target trophy walleye, smallmouth bass, pike and lake trout on any of their 19 private lakes. Whether you fish with traditional gear or love fly fishing, Hawk Lake has you covered. Welcome back to Angling Buzz TV. We're talking smallmouth today. Now, James, there's sort of an interesting trend that's been happening in the world of brown bass. You know, it's really interesting because when you look at it, you know, you look at state record fish, and a lot of them are ancient. They're caught, you know, the early 1900s up into the 50s, and they're questionable weights. But it, when you look at it, over the last three or four years, numerous state records in fish approaching state record smallmouth bass have been caught all across Nor North America. And it's amazing in the fact that these fish are seven and a half to as large as like nine and a half pound smallmouths. I'm talking, Troy, we're talking big boys. <laughs> so, yeah. No question about yeah. it. Yeah. yeah, and there's no question that the angling buzz region is the epicenter of the best smallmouth bass fishing in the country. So let's take a closer look at some premier smallmouth bass waters for a highlight destination. First up, North and South Dakota's Lake Oahe. Oahe is monstrous. It's nearly 230 miles long. For years, this reservoir has been known for walleyes and big pike. Oh man, what a ball, what a blast. Recently, smallmouth bass have taken hold in a big way. Big enough to get the attention of the Bassmaster Elite Series who will be hosting a tournament on Oahe out of pier in the next couple weeks. The upper Missouri pools of Oahe, Sakakawea, and Fort Peck are the most untapped smallmouth bass fisheries in the country today. And as a side note, the Montana state record smallmouth was caught last fall a 7.51 pounder out of Fort Peck. The second highlight destination is Schwamigan Bay of Lake Superior in Wisconsin. This fishery is managed for big smallmouth, allowing a limit of one fish over 22 inches. According to local guide and angling buzz reporter Luke Kavacek, there's a big population of smallmouth in the 18 to 20 inch range. The bay is 12 miles long and averages from two to six miles wide. Early season fishing is focused around sloughs in the northeast corner of the bay. Throughout the summer and fall, packs of smallmouth rove the large weed and rock flats and break walls in and around Ashland, Wisconsin. Next up, we're going to the north side of Lake Michigan, big and little bays to knock in the UP of Michigan. It's big water fishing with miles of shallow bulrush beds, a maze of rock piles and deep structure. All this habitat equals big numbers of big fish. A few years ago, Bassmaster had their Angler of the Year championship here, and many of the pros caught their personal best brown bass. You know, we're really just scratching the surface as the amount of waters for trophy smallmouth in the Angling Buzz region. You know, you're absolutely right about that. It's interesting in the fact, like the Missouri River system, that population of fish is actually growing. I was out there a couple of years ago with Al, and it was amazing to me because everybody out there is targeting walleyes like this. Al and I get on a big outside sweeping bend on the reservoir. There's all these short coves. You go into the back ends of these coves and with your sunglasses on, and there's schools of smallmouths everywhere and nobody's fishing them. We're just like, this is heaven. Well, I'd, be, I'd, be, I'd be fishing them. Hey, right now, let's head over to Nick Linder for the first of our BuzzBite reports. Sticking to smallmouth, let's head over to Schwamigan Bay, where Captain Luke Kavacek has been targeting big bronze backs. Uh, this time of year, I'm pretty much 100% focused on smallmouth bass fishing out there. 
Um, right now we're definitely in pre-spawn stages yet. So, you know, those fish are staging up in that four to six foot of water. Some days they're moving up shallower and then they'll slide back off in the evening when the water cools back down. Water temps are in that mid 50s, kind of cracking 60 degrees some days. Uh, mainly we're swimming hair jigs and grubs right now, picking up fish that way. Um, for you cold water guys that are interested in you know, catching some trout or salmon, the near shore trolling bite out in the Apostle Islands has been pretty darn good as well. Water temps out there are much cooler still in the, in the 40s um, and that's keeping those fish fired up. So flatline trolling, planer boards, those guys pulling stick baits are, are still cracking fish out there for sure. Uh, a lot of options right now both inside the bay and on the islands. So it's a, it's a great time of year up here. Changing gears a little bit, let's check in on the Leech Lake Walleye Bite with Jason Freed. It's getting to be the end of May and things are definitely transitioning. We have water temps in the mid 50s and fish are starting to pull off and get anywhere out to 8 to 13 feet of water. And uh, this is the time of year where it's kind of a three-pronged approach. Um, you know, on days like we have today where it's bright and sunny, uh, you might want to focus on fishing in the weeds. And when you fish in the weeds, it's tough to beat a plastic. You can rip this through the weeds, a nice cabbage that will start to emerge, and that's a really, really good tactic because you're looking for the reaction bites and you don't have to rebate. So look to a plastic of your choice. This is a smart sonker. Uh, it's a perch pattern. It's really, really, really good. Um, otherwise, you know, the old standard long shank jig and a, and a shiner is still getting it done on Leech Lake. And so whether you're casting, snap jigging, but pay really, really close attention to your cadence and your line angle because those things can make a really, really big difference as to what's working and what's not. The third approach is going to be using the Lindy Rig and a Leech. Uh, that's really starting to take off. It's been really good for the last couple of weeks uh, as a change up. And so when those fish are a little more lethargic, uh, long lining a, a Lindy Rig and a Leech has been really, really successful. Thanks, Jason. Now make sure to stay tuned because we have more buzz bite reports to come as angling buzz continues. Looking for the perfect fishing vacation? Leech Lake, Minnesota. There's over 112,000 acres of water to explore with fantastic walleye, bass, pike, panfish, and trophy muskies. The fishing opportunities are endless. Leech Lake has it all with over 30 resorts, lodges, campgrounds, and hotels line its pristine shores. Plan your trip. It's Minnesota's original up north vacation destination. Having spent a lifetime fishing all over North America, I know a lot about water, wind, and waves. Water can be an inviting place, and yet at the same time, it can also be very unforgiving. With a simple push of a button, this fully adjustable Smooth Moves Air Suspension is designed to tame the waves and give you a smooth and comfortable ride no matter what conditions you face. Tame the water, wind, and waves with Smooth Moves. You have a choice, turf or surf. It's fishing season. Welcome to the outdoors. We're baiting, casting, drifting, and limiting out. The outdoors never felt so good. Catch, release, and keepers. The outdoors never tasted so good. It's fishing season. We are outdoors. Mills Fleet Farm. Explore Alexandria, Minnesota. Whether it's a long weekend or a week long loaded with family fun, you'll find plenty of things to do in Alex. Unleash your inner explorer with over 300 lakes, beaches, parks, hundreds of miles of trails, dining, golf, shopping, museums, and history. Alexandria is Minnesota's hidden gem. Go to explorealex.com to find your vacation this season. Welcome back to Angling Buzz. Now for our next report, we're gonna head over to North Dakota with Peter Olson. There's one. In today's Buzz by Report, we're gonna talk about water temperature and how to get the fish to bite. When most people think about North Dakota, they think about perch, walleyes, and pike. But the nice thing about North Dakota is there's a wide variety of multi-species lake. So if the fish are in a negative mood where you're at, switch it up and go to a body of water where they're active. Water temperature is really important this time of year because not only does it determine the fish's mood, 
but how their food acts too. For example, yesterday the water temperature was 40 degrees and the fishing wasn't very good. But today the water temperature is now 43 degrees and the fishing is more consistent. And one last thing, with an eyesight of the boat ramp, the new North Dakota state record walleye was caught beating the previous record by one ounce. So if you're not comfortable fishing the river, you don't need to go too fast and you obviously don't need to go too far. And as always, on the Missouri River, you never know what you're gonna catch. And that's this week's Buzz Bite Report. Now let's head over to Lake Vermilion with Billy Rosner where the shallow bite has been on fire. Great time of year up here on Lake Vermilion. Everything's shallow. We got the crappies and panfish in shallow right now. We got the bass in shallow. The pike are in shallow. Walleye bites going strong on both the east and west end of the lake. We're in close spawn right now, so we're starting to catch a lot of those bigger females. My approach to northern pike this time of year when the spinner baits and like the inline spinners in some of these areas, there's a lot of wild rice and dead reeds and stuff from uh, last year yet. So I like to go shallow. What I really like to do is I'll take this blue fox spoon. You can play with your colors. I'll cut off the trebles, put on like a four aught to seven aught hook, put a plastic on of some kind, throw them in shallow. Usually this time of the year, just a slow retrieve, get that nice wobble. This is a really good way to catch pike this time of the year. Now for our next report, let's head over to Alexandria where Joe Segura is hooked up. Oh, there we go. It's got some weight to it. It's gotta be low 20s. That's a solid fish right there. Look how pretty that one is. I'm just gonna show you quickly what I'm using here. Just simply using a nice wide gap jig, chartreuse, and a lively, lively shiner. Go in through the mouth, show you right there, right through the mouth, out the back of the head, and miss the spine, and they're gonna stay alive on there a long time and get some good casts out of it. Just fishing uh, 12, 15 foot gravel here. It's been, wind's been blowing in all day long, and it's overcast a uh, half hour before dark, and uh, fish are on the chew. So get some minnows, jigs, it's overcast, Whip men shallow and you're gonna have a good time. Thanks, Joe. And now for our last report, we're gonna head over to Michigan with Captain Ben Wolf. It's Memorial Day and we have some wonderful opportunities for anglers all across the state. Up in Northern Michigan, the smallmouth bass are on the spawn and it's peak time to catch these awesome fish. It's really important to practice catch and release when we catch a fish off of the bed as these are the parents that are guarding the eggs as well as the fry and this will help ensure a next generation of great angling opportunities throughout the years. Walleye anglers down in the Saginaw Bay area are still catching lots and lots of walleyes, pulling both spoons, but predominantly pulling crawler harnesses pulled at a slow 1.1 to 1.5 miles an hour. For anglers getting out on Lake Michigan, we have some tremendous lake trout and salmon action all across the western side of the state. Thanks, Ben. Now don't go anywhere because when we come back, we have cool products, rig your ride, and the technique of the week as Angling Buzz continues. Sportsmen, we're truck people, we're gear people, we're Radco people. Top brands like Lear, Access, WeatherTech, Kurt and more. Price match guarantee, exceptional service, professional installation, researched, tested, approved. Radco, when your truck looks good, you look good. Sportfish Michigan is your number one source for top charter captains and fishing guides in Michigan. Our network of professionals are full-time anglers with years of experience providing customers with the best possible fishing trip services. Fish for trout, salmon, steelhead on Lake Michigan or its famous tributary rivers, the Traverse City area's world-class smallmouth bass, walleye fishing on the Detroit River and Saginaw Bay or Northern Michigan spectacular ice fishing. We do it all. Sportfish Michigan. Get out. Get bit. 
According to Minnesota's Department of Natural Resources, in 2017, 97% of boaters surveyed by watercraft inspectors followed Minnesota's clean drain dispose laws. Let's keep it this way. Clean aquatic plants and animals from boats, trailers, and equipment. Drain all water from watercraft, including the motor, and keep drain plugs out during transport. Dispose of unused bait properly. Together, we're preventing the spread of aquatic invasive species in Minnesota. And now it's time for our cool products brought to you by Fleet Farm. We're talking smallmouth bass today. We've got a bunch of items here you definitely want to have in your arsenal. We're starting with soft plastics, Yamamoto Senkos, Yum Dingers, great stick baits, nice natural colors as well as like these cool little crawdad colors and tubes over here, impulse tackle, tubes and jigs. Well, that's bread and butter for smallmouth bass. You definitely want a selection of tubes over here. Also from Northland Tackle, they have the impulse swim baits great kind of narrow profile swim bait for a little bit wider body, fatter profile, the Rage Swimmer from Strike King. These come in a couple different sizes. And for presenting soft plastics, a good selection of jigs is always good to have. VMC and Northland Tackle, Northland the RZ jigs, and from VMC, the Finesse Half Moon jigs and regular. And then also, in, they, these are nice. They have a little weed guard on there if you fish around weeds or wood, this is really nice. And then the Mimic Minnow, tough tube. These are pre-rigged tubes from Northland Tackle, natural colors, a little bit brighter colors. You can't go wrong with either when you're smallmouth bass fishing. And a bigger jig style, swim jigs. Swim jigs are fantastic for brown bass, like these Booyah jigs. They come in a couple different sizes, throw a swim bait on there and just cover some water. And also for covering water, a good small profile crankbait. It's always a good choice from Bagley. These Sunny Bees, light balsa, uh, nice minnow color, crawdad patterns, brighter patterns. And for topwater, topwater smallmouth fishing is a lot of fun. The Arashi Cover Pop, this is a really nice kind of bulky topwater, nice scoop of mouth, makes a really deep popping sound, really, really good. Also, for topwater from Rapala, it's a nice walking bait, the Skitter V. If you've ever had trouble for like a, a topwater walking bait, this is a really easy one to use. Caspar, fantastic bait. And also from Rapala, the Rip Stop. This is kind of a nice finesse sort of a, a jerk bait. I've used this a lot, caught some great smallmouth bass on here, especially if you're fishing pressured waters. This gives them something a little bit different to look at. Caspar kind of stops on a dime when you stop it, entices smallmouth bass to bite the Rapala Rip Stop. And for line, fluorocarbon you definitely want to have, especially your smallmouth fishing. Usually have braid with a fluorocarbon leader from Suffolk, the castable Invisalign eight and 10 pound test. You can pretty much fish most smallmouth presentations with these two leaders. And a good all around rod to have for smallmouth bass, pretty much a seven foot spinning rod. If you, if you watch a lot of tournaments, the guys are smallmouth bass fishing, it's pretty much all spinning rods. Right here, the Bass X from St. Croix. This is seven foot one, medium power. Pairing this with a Daiwa Acceler LT 2500D. You fill this up with some braid, use some fluorocarbon leaders on this. This will last you through the whole season and many years beyond that with this combo. They're sold separately from St. Croix and from Daiwa. Well, all these products are great for catching smallmouth bass, and you can get them at your local Fleet Farm store, also online at fleetfarm.com. Right now, it is time for Rig Your Ride. Your truck is more than just a commuter to get from here to there. Lots of us practically live in our trucks. They help us pull our boats, trailers, and gear to the next adventure. The things you haul are just as important as the truck holding it. Whether it's your gear, pets, or even tools, you don't want your things getting exposed to the elements. So why not rig your ride? Here's a few awesome add-ons for the back of your truck to keep things secure and dry. Let's start with tonneau covers. With their sleek, low-profile design, they protect your cargo while keeping that classic truck look. Quality tonneau covers like Access, Back, Lear, and Retracts come in a variety of styles including Roll-Up, Tri-Fold, and Retractable to fit your style or needs. Need extra dry storage space? Then go with a topper. Radco carries both fiberglass and aluminum caps available in varying heights, window configurations, and styles from brands like Lear and Century. 
You can customize your topper with a wide variety of options and accessories to suit your needs with products like a Thule roof rack, carpet headliner, side opening windows, interior storage, and so much more. Your truck is where you spend a lot of time. It's easy to get it organized and looking good with a trip to Radco. And remember, when your truck looks good, you look good. Just slurp that popper. Right now, Nick and I, my son, are gonna look at some strategies for catching smallmouth bass, any bass for that matter, on top water. Top water is a fabulously effective technique for catching smallmouth bass all summer long. When targeting smallmouths, there are four different styles of topwater lures to consider. You got prop baits, you have poppers, you have jump baits, and you have wake baits. All of these baits can be worked around cover or in open water, whether you're on a lake, river, or reservoir. But there are some little things that we've noticed over the years about each individual style of lure. Let's start with prop baits. This family of lures has a tendency to work better in choppy to wavy water when some of the other top water lures just don't perform. This has huge merit because most of the time it's not glass calm and sunny. Next is poppers. These baits are probably the most versatile in relation to overall speed. You can work them very, very slow or very fast. The sound of the bait popping also sounds just like feeding bass, which is a great long distance attractor. Now we are on to jump baits. The one thing about this style of lure, you need it to be relatively calm to see its full effectiveness. That's why early in the morning and late in the evening are good times to cast these lures. Finally, the wake bait. This style of lure has a ton of great attributes. Look at this Rapala BX wake bait. It is counterweighted to give a big, slow rolling action. When this bait is moving on the top, the reflection off the surface acts like a mirror that gives you almost a schooling image. Are you ready for the best attribute of all? Big fish love it, and it's a great hooking bait. All you have to do is control your emotions a little, and you'll hook every one of them. This is with the Skitter V. I get them two at a time. Oh, gosh. <laughs> what do you think about that? <laughs> Can we get both of them in, in the same scoop? <laughs> Look at oh. that. <laughs> That's sort of cool. <laughs> that looked like a great time. I love catching fish on top. It's one of my favorite ways to get them, especially when you get like two on one casts like that. Yeah, absolutely. Anytime you can catch them on top water, you're having a fun day on the water. Now make sure to tune in for next week's show because we're going to be talking about care and keeping of the catch. We also want to remind you to help stop the spread of aquatic invasive species. Anytime you leave any body of water, remember, clean, drain, and dry. And make sure to check us out at anglingbuzz.com for the latest in fishing information from our region. And you can also enter our sweepstakes for an awesome weekend up on Leech Lake, along with a Fleet Farm gift card and some tackle as well. Thank you for joining us. I'm Troy Linder. And I'm Nick Linder. We will see you next week. This week's Buzz Bite Report. Tony Roach. Bray Brosto. Lee Telkin here. Brad Durick up here on the Red River. Muskegon River. Good luck, everybody. Have fun. We'll see you next week.